We call your attention tonight to the book of Daniel, the third chapter, and the 17th verse. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Amen. It is from this verse that we lift our thought for tonight. God is able. Yes, he is. Amen. And I know I got some witnesses here because I've heard some testimonies wow. that the Lord brought you out yes. all right. And for others of you here tonight that stand in need of a blessing, I want you to know that the same thing that the Lord has done for others, he will do for you. Here in Daniel chapter 3, we find three Hebrew boys about to go into a fiery furnace. He did seven times harder than usual. Uh, simply because they would not bow down and worship Nebuchadnezzar's idol God. These boys uh, were taken out of their homeland of Jerusalem. They were brought into the land of Babylon. But they maintained their courage. They did not bow to the king's idol God. That's what's wrong with a lot of us now. We bow to too many things. I've heard it said that if you don't stand for something, then you fall for anything. These boys here tell King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 3 and verse 17, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand. O king. These boys knew, Deacon, that the Lord had brought them from a long way. Oh yeah, in the first chapter of Daniel, we find that King Nebuchadnezzar attacks the city of Jerusalem. And he here takes God's children captive into the land of Babylon. But before he left, he went into God's temple, took out God's sacred vessels. The word says he took them to the temple of his God in the land of Shinar. And I tell you tonight, it's a dangerous thing to mess around with God's belonging. Right. Oh yeah, it's a dangerous thing to mess around with something that belongs to God unless he gives you permission to use it. Mm -hmm. Not only the vessel, but he took the brightest and the fairest of the young men of Jerusalem took them to Babylon to put them in training that they might serve in the king's palace. Among these boys that they took were Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Ah, the king spoke to the master of his eunuchs man by the name of Ashpenaz. He said, uh, 
I want you to take these boys now and put them in training for three years that they might be able to serve me. And I don't want you to feed these children anything, but I want you to feed them a portion of the king's meat. And I want you to let them drink of the king's wine. But Daniel did not want to mess around with anything that the devil had dealing with. All right, all right, all right. Too many of us mess around with too many things that the devil has dealing with. Some of us cry holy on Sunday and in and out ducking and dodging all week long. Well, I stopped by to tell you tonight that God is able to keep you if you abide in his words and let his words abide in you. But any time you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with some fleas. Oh, yeah. And there's some church folk that are just like dogs that deal with filth, some of them, all week long. And uh, whatever you do for the Lord, it ought to be real. Yes. Daniel here, along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, told Melzar, who was put over their training, uh, that I, I will not defy myself with a portion of the king's meat. Daniel suggested to Melzar that he feed them pulse uh -huh. and water, yeah. which is vegetables and water. Mills I said, now, Daniel, you about to make me endanger my head to the king. And Daniel said, I, let's try for 10 days. And I, we ought to be good looking to you within 10 days. The word says that at the end of 10 days, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were fatter and fairer in flesh than those that ate of the potion of the king's meat. Yeah. You know that's how the Lord is tonight. God will take what seems to be little and simple to somebody else. God will work a miracle in your life. You would only understand and believe that God is able. Uh, we find in the third chapter of Daniel that Nebuchadnezzar sets up a golden image in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. And uh, he says to his servants, gather together the sheriffs and the counselors and the princes. In other words, gather all the big dogs together in my kingdom. Now I want you to get the musicians together and tell everybody that when the musicians sound the music, when they strike up the music on uh, the flute and the coronet, the harp, the sackbut, the falser and the December. Ah, I want you to tell everybody to bow down and worship my God. Yes, sir. But the Hebrew boys knew that the Lord had been good to them. And uh, they would not bow down. And somebody was watching them. Whether you know it or not, somebody is watching you. That's why we all should live so God can use us anytime and anywhere. And uh, their watchers were like many church folk, always looking for something to stir up some devilment with in the presence of God's children. But I tell you, if you mess around with the Lord's children, 
it would be better for you if you had a millstone tied about your neck, cast into the depths of the sea. And the king called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Said, I'm going to give you one more chance. Now I want you to bow down at the sound of the music and worship my heart of God. These boys said in the latter part of Daniel 3 and verse 16, we're not careful to answer. The other words, we don't even have to think about it, King. We know that the Lord's been good to us. 17 verses said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us even from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But then he goes on to tell the king uh, in so many words, we know that God is too wise to make a mistake. God is too just to go wrong. So they tell him uh, if he does not see fit to deliver us, then we still know and we want you to know that God is able. You know we got to do that sometime in order to get a blessing from the Lord. We got to move on faith. Though you have not seen it yet, you speak it in the being. In the name of Jesus, we should say and stand on it that God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. There are too many of us in the world today falling for idle things, things that will not stand. And all across America, we need to realize that the Lord is able. In our family life, the devil tries to attack us. We should realize in our family lives that the Lord is able. Even in churches now, all across this land, we find more cutting up and devil men than we ever have. A lot of church folk need to realize that God is able. Then in our individual lives, we need to come to the realization that God is able. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, he's able tonight. Let's look at how God works in a family situation. What we need to do tonight is get in the word. Stay in the word. That's what we have to pattern our lives by. If we would have more parents in the word, we would have less young men wearing their pants on the rim of their behind. If we had more mothers in the word, we would have less young ladies wearing their dress tails. Higher than they ought to be. Uh, first of all, marriage is an institution that was given us by God. Let me show you how it came about tonight. Well, Genesis 1.26. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Genesis 2, 7 said, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. Breathe into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now God made everything. God saw that everything that he made was good. But then in Genesis 2, 18, he said, It is not good. That man should be alone. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That God would make for him a help me. Yes, sir. Yeah, we find in 
Genesis 2.21 that God caused man to fall into a deep sleep. There he took a rib from man's side and made woman. Genesis 2.24 said for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. You're no longer two then. You become one. But now in every situation where we have two or more people, we need a leader. Men and women, husband and wives should walk side by side. That's why I don't knock women. Somebody said God cannot call a woman to preach. God can do anything that he wants to do. He's an all-powerful God. God does not need anybody to try and take care of his business. Oh yeah, we got to walk hand in hand. But our God's intention is for every man to be a leader in his home. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Ephesians 5, 22 says, Wives, submit yourself under your own husband as unto the Lord. Or oh, God's able to keep you when you do that. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. So men, you have a responsibility. That's why every man should be born again. Everybody. But in order to lead somebody else, you got to have Christ leading you. It's a shame that we have so many single parent families. When God is able to keep us together. It's a shame that men sometimes desert their wives and their children. And I'll tell you what they need. Y'all, you women keep praying for them. They need the Holy Ghost. Men, Ephesians 5 and 28 said, sought men to love their wives as they love their own body. That's what keeps God in a marriage. That's how what make God able to keep you together. For worldly love won't keep you. No, no. Worldly love will make you hang in there for a while till you start having to buy pampers and similar. Then that's when you gotta have the love of Jesus in you. In order to stand. Children, you have a charge if you want God to keep happiness in your family. Ephesians 6 and 1 said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. And uh, if we had parents who would lead right, and children who would follow right, then uh, we wouldn't have so much school violence. We wouldn't have so many children having children. And I'll tell you, the answer is not in new laws or new legislation. The answer is in Jesus. Oh, yes. We need to turn back to our Lord. Then in the church, we need to realize that that is the Lord's house. We need to realize that God is able to let us fellowship together in the Holy Spirit. Always said the devil cannot get in the church unless some of these saved and sanctified saints ride him in on Sunday. Mm-hmm. God is able to keep you if you let God abide on the inside. The Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4 that there are diversity of gifts among us, but the same spirit. So in the church, if we want God to bless us, first of all, we got to have the church in us. Then we got to put all of our gifts together 
and lift Jesus. And I tell you, when you get on one of the cards, God is able to bless. When you get on one of the cards and praises go up, then blessings come down. Then in our individual lives, we need to realize that God is able to keep us. We have too many church folks laying around and shacking up when you ought to be getting closer to the Lord. We have too many church folk that cry holy on Sunday and curse and swear during the week. Ah, uh, if you let God come in and let your body be a temple for the Holy Spirit, God is able to keep us tonight. We have to stand like the Hebrew boys did in the midst of opposition. We got to stand. You may have to cry sometimes, but you ought to stand up for what's right. And I'll tell you, if you will stand up, God will show up. God will bring you out of every situation that the devil would try to put you in. I've heard some touching testimony that lets me know that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. You know it's good to testify that the Lord has been good to you. A lot of times your testimony will encourage somebody else. These boys could testify that the Lord had brought them from a long way. Seem like I see the king here setting up his idol god mm -hmm. and now uh, seem like a city boys looking at a god that could not see looking at the king's god that could not hear and thinking about a god that healed them when their bodies were sick mm -hmm. and, uh, Thinking about the God that uh, had brought them through the food test. Mm -hmm. Whenever the enemy tries to press you down on every hand, you ought to think about where the Lord had brought you from. Mm -hmm. well, I have some witnesses in here that uh, the Lord brought you through danger seen and unseen and I hear them saying King we will not bow for the God that we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace mm -hmm. but the king spoke to his servants said bring me the strongest of my servants bind these boys and put them in the fire of fun mm -hmm. well, I'm mighty glad tonight that I have a witness here Jesus will lose you if you let go and let go I've heard a testimony that I'm loose now. Free the Lord. I am free. No more chains holding me. They put God's servant in the fiery furnace. The fire was so hot till the men that threw them in was slain by the heat. They fell down, down in the midst of the fire. But these boys knew 
that the Lord could lose them. Yes, my Lord. Look like I see Jesus on standby in gladness glory. Saying I gotta go down, yeah, and through the flames of the fire. Oh Lord, oh Lord, somebody is literally in a fiery furnace. But I want you to know tonight Jesus is on standby and God is able tonight. I see Nebuchadnezzar when he looked into the fiery furnace and he asked somebody, said, did not we put three in the fiery furnace? Somebody said, yeah, king, you know I don't care how much wrong that somebody does. The devil will always send him a backup, but God got all power in his hand. King said, I see four men walking loose in the fire, and the fourth one look like the Son of God. As I close here tonight, is there anybody here that know God is able? And he able to open doors for you tonight. And he Pick you up when you're falling down and able to give you joy in the midst of sorrow. If he able to make your enemy your footstool, I don't care what you're going through tonight. God is still able tonight. If you need if you need a blessing, Jesus is standing by. The reason I know he's good tonight. So many times when I was falling down, the Lord picked me up. There's somebody else here tonight. Don't mind me no witness that the Lord will bring you out if you don't mind. Tonight, let me hear you say the Lord, the Lord, ah, the Lord. He'll bring you out tonight. Whatever you're going through, lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. He will. Woo! He'll make a way for you tonight. Somebody feeling right now. Let me see your way. Somebody know that God is able. I know I got to stop here now, but you ought to be mine. For the day when you were lost in a world of sin, on your way to a devil's head, didn't have no God on your side. But God was able to pick you up out of the muck and mire. Raise your feet on solid rock. Set a fire to burn it on the inside. How many of you tonight got a Holy Ghost fire on the inside? Ain't God able to clean you up? Ain't God able to watch you clean His blood can wash you clean. you've done. God specializes in things impossible. Things that are impossible with 